Now let's talk about some application problems for a system of equations. Let's say you're given that the demand curve is this guy and the supply curve is this guy and the question is simply find the equilibrium. Well, this is no different than two equations with an x and a y and you got to find using substitution for example. Here it might look a little funky especially this notation often like this looks like q to the power of d or q to the power of s, but this is just notation often. Um, better notation would be if it were a subscript, but often sometimes, you know, some textbooks have, have it as a superscript. It's not an exponent. But in either case, this is just talking about quantity. So whether it's supply or demand, this is the quantity, and this is the price. And the equilibrium, if you were to graph out the supply and demand curve, if you were to graph out demand and supply, the equilibrium is just talking about the intersection. So really, it's no different than just saying, find the point where these two mx plus b lines intersect. And again, we're going to solve it the same way we'd solve any other system of equations. Plug, you substitute one into the other. Now here, since they're both in Q equals format, the substitution is going to look really easy because this is already solved. We've already solved for one variable. So when we substitute that in, so we're going to replace this Q with what Q is, which is 400 minus 10P. So we're just going to write 400 minus 10P equals, then the rest of this equation, 100 plus 20P, right? So we're basically just setting this quantity equal to this quantity. And we're asking which price makes that happen. And so just doing the algebra, subtracting the 100 from both sides, this becomes 300. And adding the 10p to both sides, this becomes 30p. Dividing 30 to both sides, we get uh, 10. So that means that your price is 10. Now to find the quantity, we could plug it back in. Hmm, should we plug it back into this guy or this guy? Uh, it shouldn't matter. If you were to plug it into one and versus the other and you get a different answer, which one should you trust? Which is more correct? Neither. Because if you get a different number, that means you've made an algebra mistake somewhere. Because it can't be the intersection if both of these have a different Q value at the price of 10, right? Then price of 10 is not where they're intersecting. So in, in a way, it's a built-in way to check our answer. So we, we just plug in to this equation of Q is 10. This will equal 400 minus... 10p p is 10, so 400 minus 10 times 10 is 400 minus 100, which gives us 300. All right, let's just make sure we get the same thing here. If p is 10, this is 100 plus 20 times 10 is 200, ah, and 100 plus 200 is 300. All right, so we didn't need to do both ways. That was just us checking our answer. And now we're not 99, but 100% sure that we did the algebra, right? And our final answer is that the equilibrium is that the price is $10 and that the quantity is 300 units. All right, now let's do another application problem. Huh. Let's read this question here. They're not giving us any equations. They're saying a school buys 200 textbooks. Some of them are econ textbooks, which are $30. And some of them are staff textbooks, which are $55. And the question is how many of each did they buy if the school totally spent this much money? Now, if you were to ask this question as like a puzzle to most people in the world, they're going to guess and check. They're going to say, well, what if it's 100 and 100, right? They're going to do 100 times this, plus 100 times this, see how much money they would spend, right? Because if it's 100 times 30, that's $3,000 that you spend on econ books. And 100 times 55, that's $5,500 that you spend on stats books. And if you add them up, that's pretty close. That's 3,000 plus 5,500 is 8,500. That's pretty close to this guy. So we kind of already know just by guessing and checking the answer is kind of close to 100 of each. And they would just guess and check and tweak until they get the right number. Now that's a very inefficient way to do it, especially if the numbers aren't so pretty and if you have decimals and stuff. So whenever you're encountered with a story problem like this, whether it's talking about books and budgets or whether it's talking about political ideology or really whatever in the world you want to try to translate that into equations and so really this is basically two sentences that's going to basically give us two equations so let's just do and so part of that is 
you need to have that sort of ownership of the material and just be confident labeling things by certain variables. So you could say, for example, you know what? I'm going to say E is the number of econ textbooks that they buy. So E is the number of econ books that they buy. And S is the number of stats books that they buy. Now, you could call them X and Y if you prefer, or A and B, totally fine. Either way, you should get the same answer. So if you just call them, you know, E and S, let's translate. A school buys 200 textbooks. Well, that means however many econ books I bought, plus however many stats books I bought, has to add up to the number 200. All right, easy enough. Then the fact that econ textbooks are $30 and stats textbooks are $55, and that I spent a total of this much, huh, let's see. If I were to just ask you, if you buy E or X or whatever you call it, if you buy X econ textbooks and they cost 30 bucks a piece, how much total money did you spend on econ textbooks? Well, it's just 30 times X, right? 30 times the number of econ textbooks. That's a dollar amount spent on econ books. So really, that's like 30 times E, that product, that's how many dollars I spent on econ textbooks. How many dollars did I spend on stats textbooks? 55 each times S of them. So 55 times S, it's an unfortunate choosing of the letter S. It kind of looks like five, but you know, Bear with me. So 55 times S, that's that's how many uh, dollars you spent on stats textbook. So 30 times E plus 55 times S, if you add them, that's how much money you spent in total on both textbooks, right? That's how much money on econ plus money on stats equals the $8,450 that you spent in total. Eight, four, five, zero. Okay, so basically we now have translated these sentences into two equations. This one equation and this other equation, and now it's no different than any other um, problem where you have to use substitution. So here, for example, I could solve for, I could just subtract E from both sides, and so that's S equals 200 minus E, right? And then I can replace this S Right, so the substitution. So this equation then becomes 30e plus 55s, but s is really the thing I'm substituting, 200 minus e. Here's where it's good to be safe and use parentheses because there's going to be distributive property. So again, so far I just copied down this sentence, but I just replaced s with 200 minus e because that's what it was from the other equation. And now from here, it's just pure algebra, just pure distributive property, 55 times 200. I don't know what that is in my head. I'm just going to use my calculator, and I get 55 times 200 is 11,000. So that's 11,000 minus 55 times E is negative 55E equals 8,450. If you were to combine like terms, 30 minus 55 is negative 25. So it's negative 25e equals, and you can subtract 11,000 from both sides. So that's gonna be 8,450 minus 11,000 gives you negative 2550. Negative 2550. And finally, divide both sides by negative 25. So that divided by negative 25 that's me positive 102. So now I have sort of my answer. I bought 102 econ textbooks. And I can easily find the stats textbooks because I have this equation right here. The stats textbooks is literally 200, the total textbooks that I bought, minus the econ ones. So 200 minus 102 is 98. So I bought 98 stats textbooks. And that's your final answer.